I don't know if you can hear it, but I've been waiting literally all day for the rain outside to stop. It is currently tipping down and right about two meters from where I'm sitting is an open window with a tin roof. But that's okay, we're gonna push through because we're looking at etymology and I'm a huge word nerd. That's right, you thought I was a science history nerd. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet, people. <laughs> The word science first appears in around about the 1300s. It comes from the Latin word scientia. Scientia? Scientia? I don't know. But actually the version that we use today in English, we pinched directly from French. That's right, we totally stole it and we're not giving it back. Initially it was used to describe broad knowledge of a particular topic and this was usually in relation to knowledge of God or what God knew. And it was actually used this way in a Shakespearean play, All's Well That Ends Well, in 1623. In the times following it went through a bunch of definitions. So it was used to describe the opposite of art, it was also the partner for conscience. So science was what you knew and conscience was what you felt. It finally pops up in 1600 in the writings of a guy named William Vaughan. The name of science is taken more strictly for a habit gotten by demonstration separated from wisdom. He and a bunch of other writers start using it to describe the study of observable facts. So it's finally starting to sound a little bit familiar. In 1779, Claude Francois Xavier Mulot used it to describe a guy named Sir Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon, eschewing the futility of abstractions, which the doctors made their sole study, established the basis of science on the phenomena of nature. Nowadays, the word science is used primarily to describe the study of the physical universe and its laws, but it's also a little bit more than that. Science itself can mean a bunch of observations about something, or it can be the processes that explain something. So for example, the science of ah, tea, science of tea. I think what I'm trying to say is that words are really nuanced and interesting and this series is gonna be fun. Have you got another word for me to investigate? Make sure you leave it down below in the comments or get in contact with me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat or Twitter. You can also find links to extra content on my blog. Next week we're going to be back to business as usual. On Wednesday we're going to be looking at another sciencey word in its history and then on Friday we'll be back with the history of plastic. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and also the little notification bell next to it so you get notifications of when new videos go up. They're going to go up twice every week now. I know. It's crazy. I'm gonna have to say that name again. Ah, crap. <laughs> there are two things I know how to say in French <laughs> after studying it in high school. The first is je mangerai ma basket pour le petit déjeuner, which means I will eat my shoes for breakfast. At least I think it does. We kind of cobbled it together with the, I'm not good at French.